I'm Mary Walling Blackburn, and I'm here with Dave McKenzie, and he is a visiting artist here at Meadows School. Hello. Hello. So, so, I gave you a list yes. um, sort of things that we could potentially talk about. Right. Uh, a through F. Mm -hmm. F, means F was none of the above. None of the above. Right, done. Done. Yeah. So, I, uh, I'd like to know if there's any of these that you'd like to start with. Uh, I think I wanted to talk about E to start, which had to do with death. <laughs> which, where else would you start but, but, yeah. but the end? Uh, so maybe, I don't know, do we have anything to, to say about death? That's sort of like weirdly broad, right? Um, I don't know, maybe I'll actually just sort of ramble on, I don't know, for a bit. Or, um, so we, we talked about this a little bit before, but somehow maybe in sort of our thinking or one's thinking about being an artist, maybe some topical issues have, um, at least for me recently, I noticed um, how much I feel the world has sort of changed in my short time yeah. here, right? Um, and how those changes, I think, have really interesting consequences for producing art or maybe what it means to be an artist and the ways that one might deal with that um, in terms of, I think, trying to act as an artist or living. Um, so, you know, one thing I was thinking about today, especially as when I woke up, was, and I think about a lot, but kind of a question of authority. And there's, I mean, you know, volumes written on the idea of authority. But, I don't know, I think this question for me is really important um, because authority is not anymore just sort of rooted in any particular institution or institutions, right? And it seems like one of the changes that we're experiencing because of, I think, technology and, you know, history, um, the kind of like uh, certain things sort of coming together at, at this particular moment maybe. It seems like authority has been, obviously not completely, but in many ways there is no authority, right? Which is, sounds great on one hand, but is also maybe weirdly problematic in a way that at least I hadn't considered before. Um, so, I think it's clear like the church doesn't have authority for a lot of people. I mean, clearly people still believe what they want to believe and, you know, fall into sort of hierarchical structures, but the like, government doesn't have a kind of clear authority anymore. Um, like, you know, um, like an institution like a school is, doesn't have as much authority as it once had. Um, Teachers don't have as much authority as they once would have had, um, and it, it begins to be a question of I think how do we how do we know things right? Mm -hmm. How do we what what um, what can we appeal to uh, as a way to like ask? Uh, I mean, how do we know things, and how do we s determine that thing is not only true but like what what systems do we use to verify things and believe in things? And I don't have a kind of straight line, but I mean, it's also a question for like an artist in, in really like typical material formal ways. You know, like I, when, I, when I've taught, I often have students and I'm like showing them all this work, right? You know, isn't this great? Isn't this interesting? Look what, look, look what these people have done. And um, they're often, you know, not always taken with it, yeah. which is fine. Um, and then someone, you know, someone will say, oh, have you ever seen this, this video online? And I'll go, oh, what is it? And they'll describe it. And I go, oh, there's an artist from like 1970 who made that work. And it's always the same. It's always blank. As, and which is really striking to me that um, I never know if I'm just like destroying some sort of notion that they have, you know, where I'm, I'm substituting my own kind of position of, I can tell you about someone else who did this before this thing you found out about. Are you injecting the canon? Not even, not even the canon, but just sort of like time. Like I know you think that this, this, this person who's making this video or this work, and it's really interesting, really great, but isn't it even greater <laughs> that someone did it in 1972, mm -hmm. before the internet, before, like, before clicks and likes, and verifiable ways of, of popularity. Like, isn't that amazing? And I realize it's not for them. But um, did they ever say, it was really amazing 
1882 when someone made this piece without a video camera. Do they ever say that? Yeah. They never say that. <laughs> no, they don't, they don't say that. Um, no, they don't. But, you know, I mean, I think we're all at this moment um, in some small way and maybe large ways, we're all sort of, ma we all think of ourselves as masters of ourselves, um, which is really great on many levels, right? That there isn't, there aren't these old institutions which demand our sort of like acquiescence and obedience. And at the same time, but what is there? And it sounds really good to say power is now given over to more people. Um, but it has, in some ways, it has just as many strange and interesting consequences. So I got a little bit off, off track and I've been rambling, but um, so on the news, I was listening today about China um, allegedly like computer hacking the US. And it's really fascinating on so many levels. And computer hacking is a skill that anyone can have, in a sense. Like, I mean, it's just, it's not, it's not building an atomic weapon, right? That's like the older model um, where, oh, countries compete to have a nuclear arsenal, right, which can obliterate the planet. And now it seems like we're getting closer to a point where a small country with, you know, a couple of really talented, smart people who understand networks and security systems and the fact that no security system on a computer on the internet can ever be, you know, perfect, right, mm -hmm. is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So what is a world where maybe we all have our finger on the button? Mm -hmm. Is that better than a world where just a few governments have their finger on the button? Or is it the same? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, you're <laughs> asking me, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I'm just putting it out. It's a, no, I'm asking everyone. It's a general. It's a general kind of question. Yeah. That somehow. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I guess I'm I'm thinking back to. Uh, I mean, I could go back to several different places here. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna uh, take the the feet of the trapeze artist who's you know the, the last mm -hmm. sentence mm -hmm. that you're that you're speaking of, um, and you it seems like you're trying to say something about uh, control. And mm -hmm. autonomy, um, and and what happens when it's uh, dispersed, mm -hmm. and I think that there's something that relates to your work in a closer read, which is is what is the object that looks like a body but is not a body, and that's the the puppet, right? The souvenir, right? The blow up uh, float, mm -hmm. and all of these are bodies that are not quite in control of themselves. Um, uh -huh. They're not, they, they don't have, um, they don't have an infinite consciousness, you know, so they have, they have no conscious. So uh -huh. they're basically, uh, they're floating and always a subject. So there's these, there's an accumulation of objects you produce that function in this way, uh -huh. that are always subject to who's handling them. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, but you can reject that. No, it's not so much. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna accept or reject it, right? Yeah. Um, exciting if you rejected it. <laughs> I reject it. <laughs> uh, throw it out. No, and again, I think, yeah, I mean, I could say something more about my work and that sort of relationship, but I'm gonna skirt it a little bit because. Yeah. Um, I mean, maybe it's a bigger issue or bigger kind of question about, um, yeah, a relationship. I mean, the body as a, is a tool, you know, and even if we or I make a sort of substitute, and if that substitute is a puppet, it still has some relationship to the puppeteer, right, and sort of who can, who can move the arms mm -hmm. the right way or the wrong way. Um, but so much, I think, of the way we seem to be proceeding with, with, with tools is, is so often to strip away a body mm -hmm. and at the same time to think that a body is not so much, right? So I think um, there's a sense within 
technology at the moment that the body is, is a really flawed um, device. Mm -hmm. All right? And that's, for me, that's, it's not that I disagree, and maybe this is like where the kind of issue of, of death and mortality yeah. and all those things come in, but it's more an issue of, it's actually really amazing, yeah. right? And I still think we don't fully understand it, the body, mm -hmm. and all the things that are related to that idea, um, a ways of sort of like perceiving things mm -hmm. and touching things and moving through mm -hmm. space. Um, so a clear kind of example for me, and I've sort of talked about this a couple of times, but I saw um, Eric Schmidt, who was a, I guess maybe, you know, he's like a chief executive officer or something along those lines of Google, okay. uh, give a talk. <clears throat> and I found it really frustrating because his sort of sense of the world is one where technology not only dominates, but it really replaces this sort of thing that you have. And the sooner the better. The, yes, very much. Um, and it's not just a sort of substitution for me, yeah. but it's a substitution that is, one, not critical, mm -hmm. right? And, and two, I think it doesn't, it doesn't take into account the fact that whatever this is, even if it's flawed, mm -hmm. it's interesting. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, this is for me, this is how actually I think, start to think of authority. Mm -hmm. right? it's, not a, it's not only about kind of power, but maybe it's about thinking about things, how things have been, yeah. both in the past and why they were that way, and yeah. how we can change them, yeah. and, and also really recognizing that whatever we have at the moment is always subject to being reinterpreted and is, is always in some ways a failure. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, that's for me where an institution should lose its power. Like, it is already a failure, and that's okay. And how can we reconcile, like, deal with that question of failure? Well, an institution is, a, it can be said to be a failed body. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if you're someone, there's one, uh, I think, uh, early father of, of mental health, one could say, uh, uh, in France named uh, Uri, mm -hmm. and he says the institution is ill, which is very hopeful. Because mm -hmm. that means maybe we can nurse it right. instead of saying it's a corpse that right. we keep existing in parasitically right. Right. Um, for a long time. Mm -hmm. Because, the, you know, like right. uh, insects in a tree trunk. Well, that's, I mean, for me, that's a really uh, a good place to begin because yeah. to, to deal with a kind of illness or to think of something as able to be cured or uh, you could maybe live with an illness, right? Um, is much different than just replacing it. Yeah. Um, I think if you have, I don't know, kind of disease, if you have heart disease or something, I don't, I don't know, I'm sure I'll come up with the wrong analogy at this moment, but um, maybe they can give you a heart transplant. But wouldn't it be better if you, you keep your heart, mm. but they're, they're able to like keep it going? Maybe, I don't know, like, uh, as, just as opposed to giving you uh, someone else's heart or an artificial heart, um, like that's, that's, that feels radical. Okay, but then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maddeningly uh, continue my role of, of cleaving this close to art and say, so, so what sort of, what's, I mean, do you, are, you, uh, are you attached to a sort of uh, in, art institution that you think needs a transplant? I mean, do you feel that, I mean, when you talk about the death of, of autonomy or these greater structures, and we talk about nation, or we talk about uh, corporations like Google, that's a very different relationship to the body people think, even though mm -hmm. I think in Spivak's new book about the university, mm -hmm. she thinks universities are just corporations at this point. Mm -hmm. So she would just say, you know, they've got bad hearts too. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to figure out how to bring it back to? Um, well, is it? I mean, we, I mean, are you are you collapsing them all? Art institution, uh, university, corporation. I mean, are they all are they all corporations that you uh, float through or? Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I collapse everything because um, it comes out really jumbled. I know, uh, but for me, it's the the collapse is the fact that these things are really interconnected, mm -hmm. right? And so, yeah, I could talk about, you know, being a parade float as my work. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, there's something for me at this moment wanting to think about these larger things as, God, it 
to awaken, I guess. Uh, it's a trickle down, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the thing that I'm not doing a good job of reconciling. How, like, so again, to, to briefly go back to, to Schmidt, um, he's someone who started, um, he's one of the people who's pushing the, the car that drives itself. Okay. So the car gets a certain amount of autonomy, right? Mm -hmm. And the drivers may be reduced to, all the driver's a passenger. Um, and for me, it's like when someone says something like that, and he goes really to cut a great length, where he essentially says the fact that like we've given human beings the ability to drive and smash themselves up in cars is a kind of failure, right? <laughs> yeah. And thank God we are moving closer to a world where people will get in a car and be safe because they'll be driven around by autonomous vehicles, mm -hmm. right? And for me, there's like a weird trickle down from that. Like I reject many parts of that argument, right? I think he misunderstands like how wonderful it is to, to take one's own, you know, life in their one's own hands, to be free, to hit the road, to move from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. um, yes, there's like danger and terrible kind of consequences sometimes, right? I, yeah. Um, but that isn't to say like, it's like not thought, thought through. There's, there's, there's potential consequences with a car that drives itself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Not only that, but you have to put in place like a structure for that car to drive itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, which is like one structure would be laws. So you see in California, them passing laws mm -hmm. allowing autonomous vehicles, right? Right, there is. And so mm -hmm. that's like one more kind of trickle down for me where yeah. here's like company with idea yeah. promoting a certain vision, which is, which is in my thinking about a lack of a body, which trickles down to, to government as a kind of um, in this particular instance, sounds to me like a mouthpiece for a kind of corporation um, to, you know, make law, pass laws. I mean, we now have a law where a car can drive itself when we're, like, still debating kind of, like, laws about whether, like, I can marry a man. You know what I mean? Well, I think in contrast, to keep this close to cars, right. <laughs> is that in, in Colorado right now, they're trying to determine how high somebody can be and still drive because they've, they've, uh, they've legalized marijuana. Mm -hmm. So you have one, one body of laws about yes. how can we have these, these cars that operate mm -hmm. without our bodies being in control right. of them. And we have another state area that's grappling with a body that is absolutely in that car. But if they actually would just fuse this, and they would allow all of like what like these people who are high just can't drive their car, right? They could they could use these, they get these Google cars, um, you know, right? So these are right. So I mean, so I feel. Well, I guess my point is, is that it seems to me that it's not an an, an overarching um, kind of uh, position on on autonomy, mm -hmm. but that it's actually. It's actually there's these tensions and there, it's shifting throughout oh, yeah. the area and when where one is is moving in another way another is is another it's almost geological mm -hmm. right? so it's these shifting plates right um, it's not so, either or it's not either or no it's not either and, or yeah and so right. and the body is not either or right then the body is is ambivalent mm -hmm. and I think that that's there's an ambivalence to death in the bodies that you produce. I mean, there's an ambivalence um, to the also to the the viewer. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have this, you have certain objects, or not even just the the bodies that you produce, but the bodies of work. I think are always, for me, flirting with ambivalence. Right. I mean, that's because I'm more ambivalent about things, and I, I like ambivalence, right? How is the ambivalence political then? To make sure that I'm staying close to what you even like to talk about. <laughs> we don't have to. We don't have to stay close. I, I, I mean, I, mean. I, I obviously I like to travel around, and yeah. these things don't have a kind of logical conclusion for me. But I think what what I'm struck by is that there seems to be a kind of project of of, of stranger certainty. Of, right. Of, sorry, say that again? Uh, of a sort of stranger type of certainty okay. than, than I've been used to. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's any better. Um, so there are all these kind of arguments that are being made, um, dismissing, right? It's almost, it's, I mean, it's, it 
it's as if like there are like these large philosophical questions that we've been asking forever that no one's just, no one has really been able to say like oh I've, I've got it right and at the same time it seems like we're, we're closer to a moment where it seems to be like those questions now seem to be like oh that's not a question it's not ambivalent the, the body's bad mm. right and that's yeah. the kind of like the, the, the place that I'm always sort of freaked out about right and it's not that I think the body's good yeah. that's not my that's not my argument uh, it's hopefully like some of the work that I do it's complicated you know um, you know we've talked about this piece this bobblehead and you receiving it and it's on your you know shelf or wherever it is. and you feel like you have to talk about it defend it defend yourself from it by because it's a figure of me and maybe people coming over don't know me and they see you and they wonder why you've got a little tchotchke of a black guy on your bookshelf and kitchen shelf above the sink who is he yeah. who is he and there's a there's a history of these sorts of objects I mean it's not it's not a particular caricature of me per se you know it's not like an exaggeration of my lips and my nose or whatever um, but I mean that's a place where I think Ambivalence is instructive in the sense that it doesn't allow us to simply do away with any of those things, right? It doesn't allow me to do away with uh, my body, right? The body that I get born into the world with. It doesn't allow you to deal away with, uh, you know, a history, right? That is clearly potentially made visible by the work. Um, it doesn't maybe allow the people who see it to do away with that. Um, so that's when I'm interested in ambivalence, which says that there isn't necessarily a clear-cut answer. And when the, the times when we think we're closer to that answer, we're actually maybe much more destructive. Um, and destruction is, 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 neg is, is completely negative for me in my thinking at that moment, yeah. as opposed to destruction as a, as a way to kind of rebuild something. Um, and so that's why I talk about yeah. people like Eric Schmidt, because it doesn't have anything to do specifically with, with my work, but um, that kind of thinking, again, there's a kind of trickle down, and I can't kind of go through all the steps, but that kind of thing conditions all of us, and uh, the way we've already been conditioned by other, other people who've made decisions before us. But you're also, with the bobblehead that is above yeah. the kitchen sink, and I see every morning, you know, I see, do I see you? I see mm -hmm. this, do I see an effigy? Do I see, right. what is it? I, I see this thing. And what what we have never said is, is what does it do, what does it do in this moment to you? How does it empty out your body? I see you once in a while. Mm -hmm. I see that, I see that bobblehead every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. And so when I come back to you, uh -huh. there's a then it creates another ontological problem in terms of what is being. Mm. Yeah, which is, <laughs> you know, there's no shortage of thinking along those lines. It's, you know, when are we essentially in the world, or what does it mean to be, I and mean, what does it mean to, to think of yourself as a creature who can understand its own being, right? And so, mm. I mean, for me. Not only that piece, but many of the pieces which have some sort of idea of meeting, interacting on some level, are, I mean, maybe I would describe it at this moment, they're like historical, mm -hmm. right? Where they are about being present and being forgotten um, and maybe being able to be remembered. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like a photograph, you know, this way that when you're looking at a photograph, so often you're looking at someone who's dead, or someone, who, or you know, that, or it's always going to be that like the death is coming. The photograph is like locking in this moment, allegedly, supposedly. Um, but I always feel that way with like found photographs, like old found photographs. All these people could, are, are dead, maybe, right? Or and certainly they will be. Um, and there's this kind of, I mean, it's a strange object. It's both a tool, it's both a way to kind of like remember and have documented a moment, um, and that person's also dead. I don't know I don't know what to, to really say about that, but that's something that I often think about, um, and that's 
that's even true in the bobblehead in a way. I mean, well, you're on your way to death, right? but he's not. <laughs> I'm on my way out, but he's not, right? Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, he's never alive, but then he's never dead. Right. Where you get to be both. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> I'm a cat in the box. Um, <laughs>